Good afternoon, everybody. Um, may I first acknowledge the original owners of the land on which we're meeting. Uh, I'm Mick McManus. I'm the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Biological and Chemical Sciences. Um, welcome to this uh, public lecture in honour of our friend and colleague, Steve Irwin. Before proceeding, may I give a special welcome to Terry Irwin, uh, Steve's wife, Bob Irwin, Steve's dad, uh, Ms. Uh, Carolyn Mao, member for the Glasshouse Mountain uh, electorate, uh, Mr. John Standen of Australia Zoo, uh, Professor Paul Greenfield, the Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University, Mr. Douglas Porter, Secretary and Registrar, Professor Scott O'Neill, Head of the School of Integrative Biology, and Professor Ian McKinnon uh, from the Australian Research Council and uh, state government representatives, uh, welcome, and welcome to the University of Queensland. This is a special event where we wish to recognise Steve Irvin's wonderful contribution to crocodile research, wildlife and environmental conservation, and science education. Professor Craig Franklin's lecture tonight will outline Steve and Australia's, Australia Zoo's connection with the University of Queensland. Craig's relationship with Steve goes back uh, some six years and they, along with the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Services, held an Australian Research Council linkage project together. These are grants which focus on forming partnerships between government, private enterprise like Australia Zoo uh, and the university to research into important issues. The focus of their study was to understand the behaviour of crocodiles, and Craig in his lecture will discuss the grant in reviewing Steve's significant contribution to science and conservation. I'd like to recognise the wonderful, wonderful uh, support we received from the Australian Research Council for these studies and in so doing welcome Professor Ian K uh, McKinnon who is Director of the Australian Research Council's Linkage Program. Welcome Ian. In addition to uh, research, Steve allowed us allowed the School of Inter Integrative Biology uh, to have special access to Australia Zoo and our students in the uh, course called Australian Terrestrial Environments were able to have a real wildlife experience at Australia Zoo. We've known for a long time that students learn best when they're doing science and we, had, we are deeply appreciative uh, of Steve's generosity in allowing our students to have such a rich experience. Australia Zoo helped us in many different ways and so they span both the research area and the education area. At the end of the lecture, uh, the Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor Paul Greenfield will present Terry, Steve's wife, with an adjunct professorship we had awarded Steve prior to his death. This honour was awaiting uh, Steve uh, at Australia, Australia Zoo but sadly he never returned to find out the good news. This is an honour that we consider is richly deserved. Above all, Steve Irvin was the quintessential communicator. He had a fantastic passion for his work. While he had a remarkable capacity to hold an audience, one also felt that Steve was talking to each one of us in a very individual and engaging manner. I consider this a wonderful talent and a very rare gift and it's something that all academics at universities would like to possess, but it only is given to, a very few, to, give, given to very few people, uh, and Steve Irwin was one of those. Steve was also a great, great wildlife conservationist and environmentalist, and more importantly, he practised what he preached. Through, through Australia Zoo, he put Queensland and Australia on the map. He was a great Australian. It is important to note that this lecture comes on the eve of Steve Irwin Day, which is tomorrow. And now before, uh, I now wish to uh, invite Steve's friend and, and uh, colleague, Professor Craig Franklin, who holds the prestigious Australian Research Council Professorial Fellowship and has also received major, major teaching excellence awards to give his lecture entitled Tracking Crocodiles in Three Dimensions. Craig. Thank you, Mick. 
It's also my pleasure to welcome you here to the University of Queensland. Uh, Terry and Bob, distinguished guests, uh, colleagues, my Australia Zoo family, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What I, what I hope to do over the next 40 minutes or so is to give you an insight into the research that Steve's been involved in over the last uh, few years, and in fact extends further back than that. And uh, hopefully it will reveal a new side of, uh, of, of Steve Irwin. And I think really that the, the best place to begin is just to recap on Steve, Steve Irwin, we, we all know, came to admire and love. <laughs> I spent what felt like a lifetime up in the wilderness catching crocodiles on my own and occasionally I'd have family and friends helping me, which was great. Dad bought me this old national video recorder, which I'd jam in a tree on the mud bank, put it on the front of the boat, on the back of the truck, absolutely everywhere to capture a piece of history. Look what that crocodile did to me, Suey. Thanks a lot. Okay, that's it. Go on home, fella. Sat tracker looks good. The dinosaur is going home. Oh, you're But you know what? I feel good. I feel great. My job is done. My mission is complete. Woo! Steve's mission may be complete on, on this earth, but his legacy lives on through his incredible family, through the hard work and dedication of Australia Zoo, but also through his research. And that's what I want to celebrate today is his contribution to research. It comes as a, as a great surprise to many people that uh, Steve was involved in kind of groundbreaking research. And for the, for the simple reason that he, he tended to keep that out of the glare of the media so that he could spend his time focusing on the task at hand. And I, as, as mentioned by, by Mick, I met Steve about six years ago and so started a very exciting adventure working with uh, one of the best crocodile biologists that I've, I've ever known. And, but prior to that, he actually had quite an involvement in research and conservation. And I thought, just as a starter, I'll just give a little bit of a recap of some of his achievements. So if we go back quite a few years, Steve and his dad were, were involved in the East Coast, Coast Crocodile Management Program, taking out rogue crocodiles in far north Queensland and, and uh, removing them from the system and hopefully uh, not disturbing livestock or humans. 